What's up guys, my name is Eric and I graduated from Downey High School, class of 2003 and I had Miss Albert when I was a sophomore in 2001, so almost 20 years ago now. I'm old. Before I get started in what I want to talk about, I just want to say you guys are so lucky to have Miss Albert as your teacher. She's such a fun, enthusiastic, empathetic, caring and dedicated teacher, so seriously be very grateful. I know the school year just started, so you have a whole lot of time left with her. Be very grateful for, your, for having Miss Albert as a teacher. And thank you, Miss Albert, for allowing me to share a bit of my story. Probably like most of you, I grew up in the Central Valley. I know a lot about what life is like growing up there. <clears throat> I know that sometimes it can feel a bit maybe bleak or restricting or small, and I guess that's just part of what living in, like a, in a bowl that's super hot and dry will do to people. I'm not here to talk crap about the Central Valley. If you look up from your phone or your device, and you look up at the, those hills in the distance, there's just so much beyond that. I was very lucky that my family used to go on trips every summer. When I was a kid, we'd go to Mexico, Canada, the East Coast, uh, the Midwest, wherever. And then as I got to high school age, I was the youngest kid, so as I got to high school age, as a family, we started going to Europe, went to Spain, Italy, Germany. So I always had kind of like the travel bug. So into maps, as a kid, I loved maps. I loved globes. Yes, the world is round, it's not flat. Uh, I would love to just see the differences in the food and the culture and the geography and the architecture and everything that, you know, you, that happens when you travel. So every year when I was a school age kid, during school I was always looking forward to summer when, go, when we could go on a family trip. Fast forward to college, graduated from Downey and I decided to go study abroad for a year. I studied abroad in Australia. I, it was my first taste of living abroad and I just fell in love with it immediately. Every day was something new. I'd go exploring, go see another part of the town, go travel to other um, states or provinces or territories, go see new mountains, see new animals, everything. It was all new, and I knew that at that time that I didn't really want to live my whole life in America. Um, after I graduated, I did actually move back to Australia. I stayed there for a couple years and I worked, and that was great, but that's not where this story's going. So now fast forward again, and it's 2012, and I'm back in America, and I'm looking for jobs on Google, and I find jobs overseas. I get offered a job in Shanghai, China. I've been in Asia ever since. I couldn't speak any Chinese whatsoever when I got to Shanghai. I just kind of jumped into the deep end of the pool, so to speak. I worked in an office with 12 Chinese people, colleagues, and two wealthy, very wealthy Chinese bosses. My job was in the immigration business. I was essentially giving PowerPoints to wealthy Chinese people who are considering investing in the USA. Um, if you invest in the USA, you can get a green card. You might not know this, but America, like many countries, offers a green card for money. So that was what I was doing. I was selling green cards to Chinese people. I did that for about three years. I got to travel all around China, giving PowerPoint presentations, you know, working in an office, doing this sort of thing. Isn't exactly the most exciting thing, so I decided to quit and see more about what China had to offer. I wanted to learn more about China. What better way to learn than kind of live the life of an economically disadvantaged Chinese person. So I bought a Sanlun Che, it's a three-wheeled motorcycle, a three-wheeled bike, and I decided to try to drive this car, this vehicle, from Beijing all the way to Xinjiang province from east to west, basically following the Silk Road. I drove this car for six days. After six days, going over the mountains and stuff, the car couldn't handle it, it broke down, and I sold it to a guy, basically, who just wanted to break it down for scrap. But me and my friend, we continued to travel. We traveled across China for a couple months. We hitchhiked, we stayed in villages with ethnic minority groups, with no electricity, rode horses across the plains of uh, Inner Mongolia. We did all kinds of awesome stuff. We, we hung from the side of a mountain on a four inch wide plank of wood over a cliff. But we did all this stuff and then eventually I personally ended up in a city or maybe a town called Xishuangbanna. This town is in the border of Laos and Myanmar on the Chinese side of the border. Um, you might have heard of the Golden Triangle. So that's where I ended up about four years ago. I pretty much spent every one of my days sitting by the riverside, the famous Mekong River, watching the boats go by, having a drink in my hand, eating pineapple, um, riding, doing photography, riding my bike, just doing what I wanted to do. I stayed here for six months and then I got offered another job in Shanghai, China. This job was just impossible to refuse because it was working for a mega wealthy billionaire Chinese boss. He's a famous guy in China. He wanted me to come work for him and help him to kind of develop his business outside of China. I did that for another couple years. Um, what the business was, not so important, um, but if you want to see it, you can, I'll put a link. I was in a documentary, you can watch it. It's about the wedding business. Anyway, so I worked really, really closely with this super wealthy, mega billionaire kind of businessman in China. I got to meet lots of other very influential people, celebrities, ultra rich business people, government officials, everything you can think of. I even got to take part in really cool events like Shanghai Fashion Week, and even walked on the red carpet at the Cannes Film Festival with celebrities all around. It was awesome, tons of fun. 
amazing time. I get to travel all around the entire world doing stuff for this job. I even got to attend a party with Julianne Moore and Julianne Moore said, Eric, you can call me Julie. That's what my friends call me. So apparently me and Julie, are, we're tight, we're like this. I only met her once. Long story short, I learned all I could. I experienced all I wanted to experience and then I decided it was time for me to go again. So I left and I came back to Xishuanbana and that's where I am now in Xishuanbana. I decided to open a small restaurant. I serve burgers, pizza, American food and it's been going fun. I've been open for about six, seven, eight months. It depends because of COVID, you know. But we're back to normal here, thankfully. My only real goal in life now is to kind of relax, again, sit by the river, watch the sunset, watch the boats go by and not really have any pressure and I don't really care about the celebrity, the high flying lifestyle it's not for me I just want to have a simple relaxing life I am very very lucky to have been able to experience so much thanks to my time in China primarily but also my experience as a child traveling my experience uh, in college going to Australia and so I'm at the point in my life where I've experienced what I want to experience not everything but a lot and I know kind of what I want right so I'm also financially in a position that I'm able to do that I also live in a very cheap part of the world which makes my money go a lot farther so I'm very, very, very privileged. I'm not sure, I don't know if Siddhartha is still the book that's on the curriculum at Downey, but when I was at Downey, I read Siddhartha in Mr. McHale's senior English class, and it's a book that has stuck with me all these years later. I still read it every year, actually. I hope that it's still on the curriculum at Downey, if it's not, just read it on your own time, but uh, if it's not, maybe that means there's better books now for you guys to read. Siddhartha is the book that spoke to me more than any, any other book during my time at Downey. I really, really hope that you'll have a chance to read it. I'm, I'm not Siddhartha by all means. I'm not that special. But I do see a few parallels in my life and his. I've experienced uh, the middle ground, like average life. I've tried to live like a poor pauper kind of. I've seen the amazing excess of the uber wealthy people. Uh, I've seen every kind of extreme and now I've decided on my path is here, kind of the middle road, just a normal life. And I still think about that book a lot, so I guess what I'm saying here is that uh, you're going to read books in Miss Albert's class. You've probably already read books at Downey. I hope they still read books in school these days. But um, I hope more than just reading it, you actually take the time to reflect on it, have some introspection about what the words mean. And I know Miss Albert is a great teacher and she will help you to understand the meaning of the books and why you're reading them. You're not just reading them to read them. They should be able to help you in some way. Americans like to say that America is the land of opportunity, and in a lot of ways it is. There's so much you can do in America. It's such a diverse and incredible place. And I will also say that you are very, very lucky to be Americans, not just because you live in America, but because of the power of your passport. I urge you to go and get a passport as soon as possible if you don't already have one. They're only $110. I know it's a lot of money for a high school kid, but the value of that passport, it's the best investment you can make in your life because the world is actually one of opportunity, not just America. As an American, the American passport is one of the most powerful passports in the world. If you don't know what I mean by a powerful passport, you can look it up or you can ask Miss Albert after you watch this video. I'm sure she'll explain to you why the American passport is quite powerful. So you're very lucky to be able to have the opportunity to get this passport. Please get it. Finally, I will end it with this. Do not be afraid to take chances, chances in your life. If you go to New York to work or Florida to travel or Canada or China or wherever you go, you can always come home. Get out of your comfort zone, see something different. There's opportunity everywhere. People around the world are super helpful, super friendly, super welcoming of foreigners. I've been to over 50 countries. I've never had an issue ever where people didn't like me because I'm a foreigner. If I need help, I ask people and they help me. Most people, I guarantee you, around the world are so friendly and so helpful and they'll do anything for you. I also urge you, as an American, to be welcoming of foreigners when they come to our country. It's the right thing to do. People are people. But anyway, the world is a safe place and it's ripe for adventure after COVID-19 passes. You don't need to follow my path. I, I, I don't think you should follow my path. Everyone should have their own path through life. If your path is to stay in Modesto and work and have a family, that's a beautiful thing and it's great. But I just want to again, 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 over and over and over, urge you, implore you to see that there are many, many, many opportunities out there in the world. I know that sometimes like you can feel discouraged being in the Central Valley. You can feel discouraged because of a pandemic. You can be discouraged because you're taking class in a computer instead of with your friends. There's a lot of things to be discouraged about. What I want to leave you with is this. Whatever your circumstance might be, I urge you to think broadly and think deeply about what your future could hold. You don't have to follow a conventional path. With the way the world is today, you can do anything you want and you can do it from anywhere. Thank you for watching this and be good to Miss Albert and each other. And each other. Don't forget about each other. If you're a bully, I'm gonna punch you.